Hello, hello everybody. We are continuing our Ace Attorney journey. Last time, uh, was a long time ago. We finished off, what was it? Justice for All with a true mind bender of a case. Overall, I still think that Ace Attorney the first is the more like cohesive game. It feels more tightly done compared to uh, Justice for All. But let us see what Trials and Tribulations, I believe it is called, has in store for us this time. Who will be our recurring, like, uh, prosecutor? Because the first game primarily had our boy Edgeworth. The second game had Von Karma, the, the, the younger, I guess. And uh, just be interesting to see if they'll revert back to Edgeworth or if they'll throw in a new recurring prosecutor for this game. Either way, let's see. Uh, I forget. Or, or do we go to new game? Yeah, we go to new game. And then we continue. <laughs> For a moment, my brain was just like, how does this, this visual novel puzzle game work? Well, trials and tribulations. Let's see. Turn about memories. All right. Sure. Let's see what turn about memories has going on. <sighs> How did I get into this mess? And who is the one talking, I wonder? Why? Why did I do that? Phoenix? Did you shoot a guy? That girl, you shouldn't see her anymore. Hey, it's none of your business. I'm telling you for your sake, if you continue to see her, it's going to be bad news. You're lying. Just listen to me. There's something you need to know about that girl. Stop it! D don't talk about her like that! And then he just punched him and he died? Is that what happened, Phoenix? Why are you wearing... Uh, why are you wearing something like that? I, it, it wasn't me. I, I didn't... Well, b b then who else, Phoenix? So have you gone insane? I didn't do it. So is this a flashback? Are we going to play as... 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 Uh, five years earlier, yeah, Mia. Yeah, for some reason my brain was just like, What's our <laughs> our mentor's name? April 11th, 9.40 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. <sighs> it's finally time. I'm kind of nervous. Huh. I didn't expect this. Oh, this music. This music's kind of a bop. Hell yeah. Ahim. Oh, it's this guy. I forget his name. Ahim. Oh, Mr. Grossberg. Good morning. Ah, Mia, please calm yourself down. You're going to get yourself arrested for suspicious behavior, no, no. I don't think that's what happens, Grossberg. I don't think that's how that works. What are you talking about? I, I'm relaxed, Mr. Grossberg. Look at me. I'm relaxed. Um, let go of my lapels. Hmm. You obviously haven't got the temperament to be a lawyer. I, uh, I'm so sorry. It's just that I'm so nervous today. Oh, that's right. This is your first time in the big leagues, isn't it? Well, never you fear, my dear. I'm Marvin Grossberg. I'm at your service. Um, actually, this is my second time in court. Still, you surprised me, what with your earnest request last night. Let me handle this case, suddenly said, and quite forcefully, too. I just found out yesterday about the case, I mean. What? And you've already learned all the relevant facts? Well, about that, you see, I mean, I have, of course I have, I think. Oh, dear. Isn't this bad? Like, obviously this isn't so long ago that the, like, three, like, 
we're still in the era of three-day court cases, so it's not like this is a new thing. In any case, don't let our clients see you no so nervous. In fact, what do we have? Proof of my profession. The first and last time I wore it was a year ago. Really? That's interesting. The first and last time. Doug's autopsy report. Date and time of death, 4 or 9 at 3 p.m. A fatal electrical shock? How are they gonna... How are they gonna try and get him for electrical shock? What? You see the poor man in the pink sweater over there? That's our client. And he's wearing a mask. <laughs> uh, uh, good morning there, everybody. Good morning. Try to keep smiling, Mia. I, uh, I just want to say, I'll give it all I've got. Yep, it'll be fine. No prob. Jesus, they went all in on animating Phoenix for his first, like, consistent appearance. Oh, what's wrong? Do you have a cold or something, Mr. Rye? Actually, it's right. Like the Flying Brothers. People screw it up all the time. And yes, I have a cold. That's what this mask is for. My doc says this way I won't give it to anyone else. Be kind to others, he says. Right, Mr. Wright. You have nothing to fear in court today. If you are truly innocent, I promise I will save you. Uh, please, let go of my shirt. <laughs> That's right, he's the one on trial, not you. He's the one we should he's the one who should be nervous. You need to stay strong for your client, Mia. My name is Mia Fay. I'm still pretty new at this lawyer thing. The first time I appeared in court was a year ago. And what was that about then? Did you lose the case? That trial traumatized me so badly, I thought I'd never set foot in another courtroom. Interesting. Huh. This feels odd. Not in a bad way, it's just kind of out of nowhere. Because the Mia that we know from, like, the first game and even the second game is a really cool-headed veteran defense lawyer, which I guess is the entire thing. This is really early years Mia. Kind of interesting that we're also, like... It's establishing here that Phoenix was on trial for murder. You'd think that that would have been a big thing. That, like, in the first game, he'd be like, Yeah, the reason I wanted to be a lawyer was because of what my friends did to help me all those years ago in, like, school as children. And then I served under Mia because she saved my life. I was like... I feel like that would be an important thing to note, but at the same time, this is a third game in a trilogy that probably wasn't fully planned. I don't know the full, like, process that these games went through, so obviously this is something that was made after at least the first game and wasn't really something they wanted to touch on in the second game if it existed then, like, in their writing phase. But it's just interesting and odd, especially to see or at least play as, a more apparently traumatized and anxious Mia Fey. Interesting. It's been one year since then, and, well, here I am again. So I suppose that this game will... Actually, this is brilliant. This is brilliant. I love this. This is utterly fantastic. This is utterly fantastic that it is very, very cool that obviously this game, the end of the trilogy, is going to focus probably on that case one year ago, or like six years ago now, I suppose, if we talk about present time. That That's the case that will probably be the throughput through the, uh, the entire, this entire game. So setting the tutorial with... A less experienced Mia and uh, introducing Phoenix like this is actually really cool. This is really cool. I can't. I, I, I yeah. This will, be, this will be neat to experience, like the rest of this like tutorial. I, I, that'll actually be a thing. I will want to see how this tutorial stacks up against the other tutorials in the trilogy. But this time, this time I'm going to win. 
for my client and for myself. And again, they just really animated Phoenix. So the murder happened two days ago. Oh, it's this guy. He's going to be younger. Court is now in session for the trial of Phoenix Wright. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. He has a pompadour. The defense today is Miss... Miss Mia Fey, wasn't it? M yes, Your Honor. Is there a problem? I was under the impression that Marvin Grossberg was to be the leading defense. Yes, well, you see, Mr. Grossberg had a, a bit of an emergency. Emergency? But isn't that him st <laughs> So now we see how Phoenix kind of got his lawyer personality, I guess. Because Mia wasn't always the cool-headed lawyer. <laughs> yes, well... You, you're just a rookie. Are you sure you can really handle this? Don't let him scare you, Mia. Give him your thought, your toughest look. Of course, Your Honor. I think. Hmm. Well, Mr. Payne, your opening statement, please. <laughs> well, well, well. I can't believe a veteran like me has to spend his time babysitting a new defense lawyer. Don't worry, little girl. It'll all be over soon. What's that all about? Was he trying to trash talk me? Now then, I'd like to proceed with a summary of events on the day in question. The incident occurred on the campus of Ivy University. The murder victim was a student named Doug Swallow. What kind of pun is that? That just feels like a weird name overall. It's, I know it has to be a pun, but I have no idea what it means. He was a fourth-year student studying farm... Pharmacology? Hmm, it sounds like he was a very bright young man. Yes, well, next we have a photo taken at the scene of the crime. We already know how he died! Like, how is this murder? He was holding a Paracel umbrella, standing underneath an electrical pole. The electrical pole broke. Or, like, the electric line broke, swung down, hit the umbrella, and electrocuted him to death. Like, are they going to say that Phoenix planned it? This is obviously an accident! What? <laughs> like, this is the shoddiest murder I've ever seen. Students... Oh, but Phoenix... Did Phoenix not report it? Ah, oh, so maybe... Uh... Like, we'll have to see more facts about the case, but yeah, it, just the way it is, I don't see how they could claim murder. How do you, like, have someone stand in precisely the perfect spot while somehow cutting an electrical line to swing into their umbrella that they're holding? Students discovered the scene shortly after the murder. They found the victim's body and the defendant who had obviously bungled his getaway. They then called the police. Hmm. That certainly makes the defendant look very suspicious indeed. Very well. The court accepts this photo into the record as evidence. By the way, I can't quite tell the cause of death from this photo. <laughs> Your reputation for su su Is it sagacity or sagacity? What is that word? Saga city. For sagacity is well earned, Your Honor. The truth is that this victim died a rather unusual death. An unusual death? What do you mean, Mr. Payne? Well, perhaps the defense would like to take this question. Huh? A simple question, I thought. I might loosen you up a bit. I'm a genteel man, if you will. Um, what? Stand up to him, Mia. Show him what you're made of. A, a perfect opportunity. Well, what was it? The cause? Go on. Please say you know at least this much. I know, because I looked it up. I'm so sorry. I didn't get a chance to read through the whole file. Uh, my hemorrhoids are beginning to act up. Now see here. The details of the case are filed under the court record. But you knew that already, didn't you? Ah, the court record. I think I can see that by pressing tab. Of which we can. All of the weapons we need can be found in the court record. Take a good hard look at the data there and think carefully before you answer, my dear. Yes, sir. I'll do just that. 
I've got to stay calm. I can't let that prosecutor get the better of me. The court record. Okay, let's take a look. Just press tab and take a look in the Death is Electricity at 3 p.m. Now then, would the attorney for the defense please answer the question? What was the cause of death? Electrocution. According to the court record, it was a fatal electric shock. In other words, electrocution. Electrocution? Hmm. But how could such a thing happen? Did the murderer use some type of new super powerful stun gun, perhaps? The answer to that will become crystal clear as this trial proceeds, Your Honor. But before that, there is one more vital issue. What's that? Why, motive, of course. Apparently, there was some bad blood between the victim and the defendant. Bad blood? What do you mean? Oopsie, I'm terribly sorry. You're the defense attorney, so you must know all about it. I shouldn't steal in your spotlight like this, so I assume we go to profile. A third-year art student. Art student? That's funny. At Ivy University. Uh, he was a fourth-year pharmacology student. Dahlia Hawthorne. Phoenix Wright's girlfriend dated the victim Doug Swallow up until eight months ago. So there was bad blood between them because of the girlfriend. Wait a minute. But he's age... Age 21. How old was Phoenix, like, in the first game? I guess... I guess, hmm. For some reason, that throws my brain for a loop. But okie doke, we have all the info we need. The prosecutor for this trial, a veteran lawyer with a little too much confidence. He's gonna get destroyed. Is he is he gonna get stressed out over this and lose his hair? I really don't like this guy's smug attitude. That's Winston Payne for you. He's one smooth operator if you catch my drift. They don't They don't call him the rookie killer for nothing, you know. Now then, let's hear from the defense. What was the source of bad blood between the victim and the defendant? And this time, I would like to see some supporting evidence. Uh, evidence? Uh, no need to get all worked up over this. As I said, all our weapons can be found in the court record. Find the evidence you need and then shove it into old Greybeard's face. I, I, I still like the neat little detail that each game has like a different colored number square. Yes, sir. Into old Greybeard's face. Uh, Mr. Grossberg, try to set a better example for the young lady. Mia, evidence isn't the only thing in the court record. People's profiles are there as well. You can toggle between profiles and evidence with tabs, so be sure to go over it well. Now then, let's see what you've got. What was the cause of the bad blood between Phoenix Wright and the victim? The girlfriend. The reason for the bad blood between the two of them was this woman here. Dahlia Hawthorne, is it? Very good, Miss Faye. You seem to have picked up on at least this much. This woman is the girlfriend of the defendant, Phoenix Wright. But up until eight months ago, she was the victim, was with the victim, Mr. Swallow. Clearly, she had some part to play in this story. <coughs> hmm. Oh, he's done it again. Before the cross-examination starts, he's already got the judge thinking like he wants. Very well, Mr. Payne. Please call your first witness. If it pleases the court, the prosecution would like to call Mr. Phoenix Wright. What? The defendant himself? Well, Miss Fay? It's true. After all, Mr. Fe Mr. Wright is innocent, right? The defense has no objection. Very well. The court calls Mr. Phoenix Wright to the witness stand. Witness, please state your name and occupation. Oh, uh, yes, my name is Phoenix Wright. My job is, um, well, right now I guess I'm a suspect. No, no, he means what you did before you were arrested. Oh, <laughs> I was a university student. Mr. Wright, you understand that you're suspected in the death of your fellow student, Doug Swell, but, but I didn't do it. I'm innocent, I tell you. I'm telling you I was... <laughs> Would the defendant please refrain from passing on his call to the rest of us? It seems the witness has something he wants to say. Mm, well then, Mr. Wright, please tell us about your relation to the victim. Right away, Your Honor. The victim and I. Um, I, I admit I was there, but I'm not a killer. All I did was find his body. I hardly knew the guy to begin with. 
I never even talked to that stuck-up British wannabe. And you've sabotaged yourself. Hmm, I see. So you hardly knew the victim. Right, like I said, I'm not a killer. <sighs> it looks like the judge understands. Hmm, you're being naive, you know. Too naive. Huh? <laughs> it seems that you've forgotten one small thing, you lady. And that would be... This witness still has to undergo something called cross-examination. Cross-examination? He's right, and it's the defense's duty to carry out the cross-examination. The purpose is to determine if the witness's testimony contains any contradictions. That's a bit odd. You'd think that... Yeah, this is weird, because this has never happened before, I, as far as I'm aware. I don't think that we've ever cross-examined the witness themselves. Or not witness, but the suspect themselves. As far as I can remember, unless you count a bit of... No, I don't think so. It does not jump to mind. Because, like, Larry wasn't brought up. Mr. Powers wasn't brought up. Maya wasn't brought up in either of her cases. <laughs> Although, now, it'd be kind of funny if back in the second case of the first game, where Phoenix suddenly became the... Suspect at the end if he cross-examined himself. But, yeah. You'd think that the prosecution would be... Like, that would be kind of cool. If, like, the prosecution cross-examined a witness and you had to raise objections to the cross-examination. I think that would be cool gameplay. Contradictions? If a witness is lying, their statements will conflict with the court record. But, Mr. Wright is my client! Even if he is your client in court, all lies must be struck down. As a lawyer, that is your duty, you see. What does he mean by that? Is he saying that testimony just now? That there was a lie? A, a contradiction? Now then, your cross-examination, if you please, Miss Fay. Please, Mr. Wright, tell me you haven't been lying. You wouldn't do that to me, would you? This is a kind of... Again, this is odd to see. Okay, we'll do another save. Oh, I like this music. Well, oh, neat. When you say there, you mean the place where the victim was murdered? Uh, yeah, sort of. The place where something happened, anyway. Something? You can't hide what happened. We have photographic evidence. <laughs> uh, anyway, Mr. Wright... What were you doing at the scene of the crime? I thought you said you didn't know the victim, Mr. Swallow. It was just a coincidence. We bumped into each other by accident. A coincidence, huh? But I'm not a killer. All I did was find his body. You said you bumped into him. You say you found the body, so who called the police? Huh? <laughs> Unfortunately, it was some other students that notified the police. Other students? That's correct. They were witnesses. Witnesses who saw the defendant standing there next to the body in shock. What? Is this true, Mr. Wright? <laughs> Could you stop sneezing every time you're in a bind? Well, it's true that I was pretty shocked when I found the body. But, but, but I... I hardly knew the guy to begin with. So you didn't know his face or even his name, right? Right! Um, well, no. That is, I mean... So, which is it? Did you know him or not? <laughs> now see here, you can't avoid answering the question by sneezing all day! Uh, um, well, I guess I did know his name. News to me, why didn't he tell me that before? Um, I heard he used to date Dolly. Who is this Dolly person? Ah, uh, yes, that would be the defendant's lover, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Oh, I see. Ah, uh, young love, so bittersweet. But that's all I knew about him. I never even talked up to that stuck-up British wannabe. Then how do you know he's British? Mr. Wright, you stated the following in your testimony. I hardly knew the guy to begin with. Th that's right, I mean, why would I even... But that doesn't sound right. If you hardly knew him... Then why would you say that the victim was a stuck-up British wannabe? <laughs> well, Mr. Wright? Ah, no, it wasn't me. I'm not a killer, I swear! 
Mr. Wright, I will give you an opportunity to revise your testimony. How is it that you knew the victim was, as you put it, a British wannabe? Yes, well... He was always walking around with a huge Union Jack on the back of his shirt. Did you see it at the t crime scene? The Union Jack, I mean. Yes, that's right. I saw it at the crime scene. That's why... That's why I figured he must love British stuff, see? It's true. I crossed my heart. I swear I didn't do it. He's acting fishier than the salmon I ate, I ate last night. May I ask you something, Miss Fay? Yes, Your Honor. What is it now? Who is this person, anyway? This Union Jack fellow. The Union Jack is the name of the United Kingdom's flag. Oh, I see. So you mean like the Stars and Stripes, right? As usual, Your Honor, your insight astounds me. Hey, something just occurred to me. Isn't there something strange about this bit just now? Mia, yeah, there's a contradiction here. M Mr. Grossberg. Quickly now, show that boy you mean business with evidence, I mean. Okay, Mia, check the court record carefully. Well, my dear, do you think you can manage on your own from this point? I think I can handle it. One year ago, I was in the courtroom just like this. I can do it. I can handle this myself. Um, you mustn't try to bite off more than you can chew, Mia. I'll be fine. I know what I have to do. Remember, you can always press Tim to get more information. Or one more thing. When you're going to state a contradiction, make sure you present some definitive proof. Okay, Mia. One more time from the very beginning of this testimony. Let's see. What evidence do we have? Really, it's... Well, first I'm gonna... Hmm. We have to go to here to... I just have to be careful not to press E. Just have to be careful not to press the button. Well, I do believe that the only thing that we have is the murder photo, so I guess let's present the murder photo. Are you certain you saw the Union Jack? Yeah, I'm sure. It was right there on his back. Miss Faye, is there some point to this line of questioning? Your Honor, please take another look at the crime scene photo. As you can see, there's absolutely nothing on the victim's back. Hey, wait a minute! He's wearing a leather jacket! The Union Jack was on the back of the t-shirt he was wearing. I was under the impression that you accidentally came across the body. But if that was really the case, then you wouldn't know that, would you? You'd have no idea at all what he was wearing underneath that jacket. Oh, I like this music. This remix. Mr. Wright, you've been lying to me! <laughs> Please forgive me! Seriously, Phoenix, what's your deal? Mia, you've made our client cry. Let him. Let him. That pee on his chest doesn't stand for Phoenix anyways. I can't believe I trusted him. Mr. Wright was all wrong. <laughs> that was an impressive bit of cross-examination. Thank you for uncovering the defendant's lies for me. It's quite clear this man did not simply stumble upon the scene of the crime. Uh. Oh, did I go too far? By the way, Mr. Wright, you seem to have a rather bad cold. Have you taken any medicine for it? I, uh, um, yeah, I took some, but... Was the medicine that you took over an over-the-counter brand called Cold Killer X? Yeah, that's right. It kills colds good. Hey, wait a second. How'd you know I'm a big fan of Cold Killer X? Why would you be a fan of a cold medicine brand? <laughs> would you happen to have that medicine with you right now? Well, actually, I seem to have lost it somewhere. He lost it? Does this even have anything to do with the case? Mr. Wright, shall I tell you where your cold medicine is right now? Huh? Your Honor, I'd like you to take a look at another photo from the crime scene. Why is he holding the cold medicine? What's this? In the victim's hand, it's... Cold Killer X! Now let's take a look at that watch. I am terrible at... Because if it was like this, that's where the thumb is. I'm just trying to place it... Does that do... Well, obviously, it's going to be 3 o'clock. Or at least whenever the watch... Because would, would a mechanical watch like that be affected by electricity? Maybe. I don't know. 
but I doubt that watch would play a significant point. But at the same time, why would you specifically draw clock hands if the clock didn't play a role? But it does seem to be pointing at three anyway, so meh, doesn't really matter. Yes, but even I've got Bottle of Cold Killer X in my apartment. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid that argument won't work. There's no doubt as to who this Bottle of Cold Killer X belongs to. Especially since Mr. Wright's fingerprints are all over it. W what? Sensing his murderous intent, Mr. Swallow must have picked up the bottle of medicine, dropped by Mr. Wright, and hid it in his hand. Why, though? His purpose in doing so can only have been to identify his killer as Phoenix Wright! That's dumb. That's silly. Makes no sense. Order! Order in the court! Your Honor, I'd like to present this photo and bottle as evidence. Very well. The court will accept them into evidence. This is very silly. Also, the victim's wristwatch was broken. Broken? Yes, it ceased functioning when a large wave of electricity passed through it. So I guess that goes to show it would break it. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have any kind of explanation for all of this? Uh, this is really bad. Oh, my buttocks, my poor, poor hemorrhoids. You're standing. How would that affect your hemorrhoids? The truth is, I went because he called me. He was in the pharmacology department, so we agreed to meet at 2.45 behind that building. We talked for a bit, and then at around 3 o'clock, we split up. Then later, when I went back, I found him lying there. I've been taking Cold Killer X for the last two or three days, but I lost my bottle of it around lunchtime on the day of the accident. Mr. Wright, that's completely different from the testimony you gave previously. <laughs> I'm sorry, Your Honor. I was afraid you wouldn't believe the truth. You'll forgive me if I say I hardly find your current testimony any more credible. Mm, Miss Fay, please begin your cross-examination. Oh, please, Mr. Wright, don't tell any more lies. Why would you be utterly scared? Then again, maybe this could be, like, traumatizing him back- Oh. Yeah, maybe it's trauma from his la the last time he was accused of something. So when something bad happened in front of him, he's like, Oh no, I'm gonna be accused again. And they're gonna blame it on me again. And no one's going to believe me, and there's not gonna be an Edgeworth or Larry to stand up for me again. It would be like if Edgeworth died, and Edgeworth wasn't there to defend him. Had you ever met the victim before then? No, never! But... That day, he called me up and told me he wanted to talk about Dolly. About this Dolly person is? My, um, it's kind of embarrassing. She's my, uh, my sweetheart. Oomph! What, what was that for, Mia? Oh, I'm so sorry. I just felt like slapping something all of a sudden. Dahlia Hawthorne was also the lover of the murderer victim, the murder victim Doug Swallow. Before she met Mr. Wright, that is. Hmm, so it was one of those nasty love triangles, I see. He was in the pharmacology department, so we agreed to meet at 2.45 behind that building. Was it Mr. Swallow who indicated you should meet at 2.45? Yeah, and we were both there right on time. Hmm, you said the victim was in the pharmacology department, correct? Yeah, he was studying how to manufacture and improve pharmaceuticals. Everyone called him the alchemist of IVU. An alchemist, I see. I gotta admit, I was a little suspicious. He had a whole laboratory and everything. It was filled with chemicals and strange machines that run on high-voltage electricity. Oh, oh, how fascinating. He sounds like he was quite an ambitious young man. What do I do? Maybe I should ask him for some more details? Hmm. We can always do it again, so about the timing. So you're absolutely certain that you met at 2.45? Yeah, pretty sure. That's the time class ends. But they're always doing experiments, so it doesn't matter much. Experiments. Yeah, those pharmacology guys are always in the lab whipping up something. Well, it looks like he's right about the time anyway. Witness, let's go on with your testimony. And we're gonna press again. And we'll go the other way. Get all the information. All the information indeed. I was wondering if you could tell me a bit more about the pharmacology department. 
Well, okay, sure. I don't know all that much, though. A little bit earlier in your testimony, you said something interesting. You said the department uses strange machines that run on high-voltage electricity. That's right, and they sure look dangerous. They use non-standard voltages, so there are high-voltage cables everywhere. High-voltage cables. Yeah, there were electric poles set up all around the building. The high-voltage cables run overhead around the roof. Finally, I think we're getting somewhere. We talked for a bit, and then around three, we split up. So what was it you were about? You were talking about? You know, <laughs> that maybe we should hang out again sometime. Hang out again sometime? I wish that were true. Then later, I went back, you found him lying there. So you say you went back. Um, yeah, that's when I found the body. Yes, but why did you go back in the first place? Weren't you angry with him? Well, that's right, I was. Then why, Mr. Wright, why did you go back there? Um, I thought maybe we could make up. <laughs> Judging by the atmosphere, I'm pretty sure no one's buying this. I've been taking Cold Killer X for the last two or three days. It's rather unusual to catch a cold this time of year, isn't it? Yeah, I always get a little careless when the weather starts to warm up. I guess I shouldn't sleep with the window open this early in spring, huh? I suppose common sense isn't always common. So, did anyone else know that you were taking cold medicine? Well, I always took one after meals, so I'm pretty sure all my friends knew about it. But well, I lost my bottle around lunchtime on the day of the accident. On the day of the incident, what did you do for lunch? Huh? What does that have to do with anything? You can never be too sure. I always eat with Dolly, just the two of us. Dolly's homemade lunches are just the greatest. Mm, her mini omelets are magically delicious. <laughs> Ouch! What, why did you punch me in the jaw? Oh, I'm sorry. I just felt like hurting someone all of a sudden. Why is it whenever, like, he it, like talks about Dolly, Mia decides to attack someone? I think that's enough for now. So the defendant and the victim met at approximately the time of his death. And then the defendant returned to the scene for some unknown reason. I'm not entirely convinced by his explanation about the medicine bottle either. Let me be frank here, Mr. Wright. Your testimony cannot be trusted. What do you mean? <laughs> I knew it was too much work for a little girl. However, there is one mystery that still remains. There is, Your Honor. How the murder was carried out, of course. Just how was the victim electrocuted? I don't believe the murder weapon has been produced yet, correct? Well, that is, I... You are correct, Your Honor. It's in the goddamn photo, you moron! So how exactly was Mr. Swallow killed? If I could somehow establish how it was done, maybe I could still come out of this mess smelling like a rose. I personally, like, I think that we can pr probably present the first one and say, hey, look, cable. It's in the goddamn thing. Your Honor? Yes, Miss Faye. I believe that if we were to piece together everything we've heard up until now, we should be able to solve the mystery of how Mr. Swallow died. Th that would be most impressive. <laughs> Quite the brash statements coming from a rookie. But even a beginner like you must understand the basic rules of the court, yes? An attorney must be able to substantiate their arguments with evidence. Hmm, of course I know that. Actually, I'd totally forgotten about that. Now then, Miss Fay, let me see what you've got. Show me how you believe the victim was electrocuted. As for the cause of death, I'd say this picture captures it quite well. What? But there's nothing that even remotely resembles a murder weapon here. Hmm, I'm afraid the defense is going to have to explain this in a bit more detail. Miss Faye, where exactly in this photo is the murder weapon? Well, naturally, it's right here. That's... that's... what is that? A severed electrical cable, I believe, Your Honor. Remember the testimony we've heard. The machines that pharmacology students use in their experiments require high voltage. And because of that, there are special high voltage cables run strung up everywhere. So then the high voltage cable? Yes, the high voltage cable is the cause of death. 
That's the most likely explanation. Hmm, that certainly sounds plausible. Well, Mr. Payne, what do you have to say about this? Well, I believe some praise is in order. Don't toy with me, old man. Now, now, the victim's cause of death may indeed have been a high-voltage cable. However, I want you to think about what that really implies. The only one who had the opportunity to use the cable as a murder weapon was... The defendant. Or, you know, it could have been an accident. Because it... How would he even cut the cable? How would they just stand there, and he would somehow cut the cable and have it fling into him? How would you do that? Yeah. <laughs> hmm. That much is certainly true. Yes, and that's not all. We have proof. Irrefutable proof that will establish that Mr. Wright was the murderer. You do? Well, what is it? His fingerprints. Fingerprints? You mean the defendant's fingerprints were on something besides the medicine bottle? Let's take another look at the crime scene. As you can see, the victim was wearing a leather jacket. And as you may know, leather holds fingerprints quite well. Uh, you mean? Yes, it was quite clearly imprinted on the chest area of the victim's jacket. The palm print of the defendant's very own hand. What? I can only think of one way Mr. Wright could have left a print like that. Intent on murder. He squarely pushed the victim towards the severed electrical cable. How would that even work? Because if you have half a brain while you're talking there, you'd be like, hey, let's talk away from the severed electrical cable. Order, order, order! That's enough! I think we can conclude that there's no reason to continue with this cross-examination. Stick a fork in us, we're done. But Mr. Grossberg! My hemorrhoids never lie. The show is over, Mia. I knew that boy was guilty the first time I saw him. No, you're wrong. Mr. Wright is innocent. No further evidence is required to convince me of this man's guilt. Your Honor! At this time, I'm prepared to render a verdict in this case. Do you have something further to add, Miss Faye? Is this what you want, Mr. Wright? You still haven't told us the truth, the whole truth. If you don't say something now, the judge is going to hand down his verdict. But, but I... I can't. I just can't say it. If I told you what really happened, then I'd be... It's okay, Mr. Wright. I'm your attorney. You can trust me. Miss Fay. No matter what it is you have to say, I believe in you and I'll represent to the very end. We've already established the defendant's guilt. There's no further need for him to say anything. <coughs> Wait a minute! Mr. Wright, I, I'll tell you what really happened! But I've already told you, Mr. Wright, there's no need for further... <coughs> I... I did it. I admit it, I pushed him! It's my fault. My fault that D Doug Swallow is dead. Really? You're... Again, why would you be joined here? That girl. You shouldn't see her anymore. Hey, it's none of your business! I'm telling you, for your sake, if you continue to see her, it's going to be bad news. You're lying! Just listen to me. There's something you need to know about that girl. Stop it! D don't talk about her like that! That was quite the push. Well, then, that proves that he did it, then. But it can't be, because he's Phoenix Wright. Unless this is like a nightmare. What you just said, was that the truth? Yes, I... I was afraid. Afraid that if I told the truth, everyone would think I was the murderer for sure. Well, as things currently stand, we're all absolutely convinced you are. But please! Please give me one more chance to explain. This time I swear... I swear I'll tell the whole truth. It'll be okay, it'll be okay won't it, Miss Faye? I... I believe in you. Oh, um, thank you. I still can't believe it. He really did push the victim. Uh, it feels like my hemorrhoids are doing the Harlem Shake. <laughs> what? <laughs> did they update this to... Really? How old is the Harlem Shake? They had to have added that for this collection. Or the digital, like, year. 
years after this game was redone for this, I guess. It's weird. That's just weird. That guy he was talking bad about Dolly. I lost my temper and gave him a shove. At that moment, I heard some kind of loud noise. A little while after I left, I started to get worried. So I went back, but he was just lying there, dead. Maybe we can present the photo, be like, if he was pushed like that, wouldn't he be on his back? Well, the explanation is really quite simple. When you pushed him, Mr. Swallow flew back and touched the electrical cable. He died from the shock, and that, as they say, is that. Hmm, a simple explanation indeed. At the time of the incident, a light rain had been falling. Wet from the rain, the victim was more easily electrocuted. But when I pushed him, there weren't any electrical cables nearby. If there had been something like that, even I would have noticed it. That's true. Even a doofus like him wouldn't miss it. Hmm, Miss Fay, let me warn you right now that if your cross-examination doesn't yield any new facts, I intend to deliver my verdict without further delay. Are we clear on that? But yes, Your Honor. Don't give up, Mia. If he is innocent, there must be some kind of evidence somewhere that will prove it. Again, I think the murder scene photo will prove it. Because, again, if he was pushed from the front, he would be on his back. So what kinds of things did Mr. Swallow say to you? He said all sorts of terrible things about Dolly. He said that she was a bad girl. <laughs> um... Is that all? Yep. Well, Miss Faye, you heard him yourself. Oh boy, you're not doing yourself any favors here, Mr. Wright. Please don't make this harder for me than it already is. Anyway, after he said that, I just, I just... I lost my temper and gave him a shove. Can you tell me what happened in a little more detail? That guy, he just said what he wanted to say to me. And then he put on the jacket he was holding and started to leave. That's when... That's when I lost my temper and flew into a furious frenzy. I just gave him a light, gentle shove to the chest. Say he landed on his back. And when you did that, there were no severed cables anywhere to be seen. Right! There was nothing like that at all! But is it possible that you merely overlooked it? Well, I guess it's possible. What are you doing? Don't let that guy steamroll over you like cheap asphalt. I believe that's important here is the moment that the push occurred. Let's continue with the testimony, witness. A loud noise, and what would you say the loud noise was, Mr. Wright? I'm not sure, but it was really loud. It was like, snap! You know, come to think of it, I wonder what that was. <laughs> Clearly, Your Honor, it was the sound of the victim being electrocuted. You're not qualified to decide that! What should I do? I'm trying on some dangerous ground here. We should probably ask for more details. Mr. Wright, that loud noise you heard may be extremely important, so try to remember what it was. Um, how do I put it? It was like a sharp crack. Ah, could it... could it have been... Yes, could it have been? Hurry up and tell us! When I pushed him, he dropped the umbrella he was holding. We see this a lot, which is kind of funny. He fell right on top of it and it broke. That was probably the noise I heard. An umbrella, huh? And did that umbrella belong to the victim? Yeah, it was a plastic umbrella, cheap and frail. Kind of like the owner. And then again, I wish I had any, any kind of umbrella. I was totally soaked to the bone. Hmm, Miss Faye, what do you think? Is there something important in that testimony just now? Um, well... Hmm. Is that important? It is! Of course it's important! This is it, Mia. The new information you've been waiting for. Of course it's important. No, that cheap umbrella is more than important. It's vital. I want to officially have it entered into the testimony. Ha, huh, how perfectly fitting. Flimsy information for a flimsy lawyer. The court agrees to the defense's request. Witness, please add the bit about the cheap umbrella to your testimony. So Mr. Swallow fell on top of his umbrella, and you're certain of this. Yeah, it was right there under him. Actually, if it hadn't been under him, I was planning on borrowing it for myself. The umbrella, you mean. 
Well, yeah, you see, I was wearing this sweater here. Dolly stayed up late for nights at a time knitting it for me. I didn't want the rain to dampen the handmade symbol of her love. Oof, my stomach is not to be used as your personal suck-up, Albia. Uh, I'm sorry. Continue with your testimony, witness. After you shoved the victim, did you leave the scene right away? Yes, I did. I admit it. I was furious. You left without even checking Mr. Swallow's condition. Well, um, yeah. But like I said, I got worried about him later. So I went back, but he, he was just lying there, dead. At that time, did you see anyone else at the scene of the crime? <laughs> um, nope. Nobody. Jeez, could that stupid cough possibly sound any phonier? Hmm, in that case, it's very hard to believe someone else could have been the murderer. Unless we find something that shows his innocence from the testimony, my dear. I'm afraid the judge will make his final decision with no remorse whatsoever. But yes, sir. But now I need more info. Info that will help me turn up some contradictions. I do believe that if we present the diddly D photo, because he's not on his cheap umbrella. Why didn't you testify about the umbrella from the very beginning? Come on, if I'd mentioned that, I would have been able to counter the prosecution's arguments earlier. What do you mean by that? Take another look at the crime scene photo. According to Mr. Wright, the victim fell on top of his umbrella. However, if you look closely, the umbrella is nowhere near the victim. Actually, it's by the electrical pole. Y you're absolutely right! The conclusion here is obvious. After the defendant left, the victim moved from where he fell. In other words, after he was pushed by the defendant, Mr. Swallow is still alive! No! Order! 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 The victim! He moved? Mr. Payne, the umbrella in this photo! Where is it now? Well, it was collected by the police at the crime scene. I want it presented as evidence immediately! Owned by the victim, found broken near an electrical pole at the crime scene. But, but the umbrella could have simply been blown up by there by the wind. He was on it! According to the testimony, the victim fell on top of the umbrella. There's simply no way it could have been blown there by the wind. I know this is matter of umbrella seems relatively trivial, but as long as the smallest doubt remains, I cannot render final judgment. <laughs> Take that, rookie killer. I must say, I still find it hard to believe that a huge pole has been blown in the prosecution's case by the defendant's testimony. The victim fell on top of his umbrella. There was a loud snap when this happened. Well done, Mia. <laughs> Mr. Payne! What are you chuckling about? Pardon me, Your Honor. It seems I was expecting too much of a free ride. It was foolish to think I could establish guilt through cross-examination alone. I'm afraid I don't follow what you're saying. Let me guess. You have another witness. Exactly! And this witness's testimony will be incontrovertible! Well, who is this witness? Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne? You don't mean Dolly? I do, Your Honor. The defendant's very own lover is a witness to the whole thing. That's right. She was at the scene of the crime when the murder took place. What? You'd think that that would be a very important detail to present before, like, guilt is confirmed with the gavel. Madman. I'm sorry to break the bad news to you, my dear. Bad news? You couldn't be more wrong. Actually, I've been waiting for this. You can't be serious. Yeah, what do you mean by that? I think this is a good point for us to stop at. Court will now enter a 20-minute recess. Afterwards, we will listen to the testimony of Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. <laughs> Again, this feels like something that should have been brought up earlier with, with, with their history. 
Miss Faye, I'm sorry about what happened back there. I... I... It's all right. At least you told us the truth in the end, Mr. Wright. Yeah. So I guess I can start to relax then, huh? Relax, my boy. You can't be serious after hiding such important facts. But... But the next witness is my dolly, right? She'll save me. I just know she will. Why do you think that? Huh? What do you mean? She... She's the love of my life, that's why. The love of your life, huh? Would you mind telling me more about you and Miss Dahlia Hawthorne? Sure, no problem. Dahlia and I, we first met about eight months ago right here in this very courthouse. Why? Why were you meeting in a courthouse? Actually, I'm studying to be a lawyer on the side. Yeah, because he's an art student, so that's kind of funny. Anyway... One day, she and I just bumped into each other in the reading room downstairs. That's why I really think it was fate that brought us together. As soon as I first set eyes on her, I knew she was the one for me. Oh, here, take a look at this. She gave, me this to, she gave this to me on the day we met as a symbol of our love. The day you met? That's kind of quick, man. Quick, someone summon up, like, the only tangible subversion-ish of... Frozen. Don't fall in love with somebody you've met that day. She'd been wearing it around her neck that day, but then she took it off. But, but before she gave it to me, she said, I want you to carry this. So she gave it to you as a present, I see. This darling little bottle is filled with memories of my dar uh, darling little dolly. I wonder what's in that bottle. It's a is, it what's, is it what's making you sick? No, because then it wouldn't just be the past few days. It certainly is a little bottle, all right. It makes me so happy, I show it to everyone I meet. I want to share my happiness with the whole world. This Phoenix Wright is so different from the one we play as. A small bottle necklace given to Wright on the day he met. Could it have been that Dahlia was smuggling some kind of pharmaceutical thing out of the pharmacology department, and that's why she was dating Swallow? She was dating Swallow, put something in that necklace, and then I guess l shrugged it off onto Phoenix until... But then he's showing it around to her, but if Swallow thought that... No? Because if he went... If Phoenix went around telling everybody, this is what Dolly gave to me. Like, I don't know. There's something has to be about Dolly's, Dolly's present. It's weird. Um, anyway. So after that, you and Miss Hawthorne started dating. Yeah, but she's so shy. Every time I see her, she always says the same thing to me. Please give it back now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that... that this, <laughs> what? I'm confused now. What a strange girl asking for a present back like that. By the way, Mr. Wright, the day you first met Dahlia Hawthorne eight months ago, it wouldn't happen to have been August 27th, would it? Huh? Uh, hey, yeah, it was! How did you... This happened on August 27th, right here in this courthouse. What's this? A newspaper clipping? Let's see. Murder in the courthouse? M murder What are you reading there? Let me see that. Oh, I see. Mia, yeah, I think I understand what you're trying to say. And I think I understand why you suddenly look, took such a keen interest in this case. I want to see that newspaper. You believe there is some connection between these two cases, am I correct? An article from 828th, almost eight months ago. What is it? Okay, so... Dahlia was there. Probably... But if it was a piece of evidence, surely somebody would have noticed since Phoenix is showing it around a lot. Well, let's read. Murder in the courthouse. Very little information. Is, oh, because it wouldn't be evidence. It would be part of the murder. And nobody would know that it was part of the murder, maybe. Very little information is being disclosed at this time since the victim of yesterday's incident is in the district courthouse cafeteria is said to have been a lawyer. However, police are questioning the 19-year-old female college student who was sitting with the victim. Hmm. I hope you don't mind, Mr. Grossberg. I, I need to finish this myself. Ah, uh, yes, but I'm afraid what you have will not be enough, my dear. I'll go and have a look in the downstairs reading room and see what else I can find. Thank you. 
I want to do whatever I can to be of help to you, Mia. Well, it looks like recess is about over. We'd better all get moving. Okay. So maybe she... So it could have been that they were eating together and Dahlia poisoned the lawyer with what's ever in that bottle. And then she gave it to Phoenix so that it wouldn't be on her when she was being questioned. And it was only later when Phoenix was like, Phoenix didn't give it back. Because he thought it was a present from her and thought it was her basically declaring her love for him. And she's basically just been quote-unquote, well, at this point, maybe he, they're not even dating. It's entirely possible that Phoenix is just kind of a psycho right now. Psycho mode Phoenix. But she's making him meals. She knitted him a sweater. Hmm. But I guess she felt like she couldn't, like... I'm guessing that she felt that she couldn't just, like, kill Ph Phoenix of, like, poisoning his food again. Maybe because she didn't have the poison, and if she tried to get more poison, the case from eight months ago would be, like, reopened if it was ever discovered that she had more poison in her. But then why would she want it back then? Maybe because Phoenix is showing it out to everybody, and all it takes is one person to be like, well, what's in the bottle? And they check out what's in the bottle, and then bada bing, bada boom, it's poison. And if it was somebody smart, so maybe she just wants the liability back. Hmm. I guess so. That recess sure seemed longer than 20 minutes, though. It didn't to me. It did not to me at all. Maybe five minutes total. That's a nice jingle. That's a nice jingle. But yeah, this is a weird... This is a weird opening case. It's interesting, but also kind of weird. It's weird. It's wonky. Court will now reconvene. Mr. Payne, please call your witness. This next person is someone who witnessed the crime as it happened. The prosecution calls Miss Dahlia Hawthorne to the stand. She's evil. The last person that had animals in their sprite was a murderer. What's with this stiff silence? In my long career as a judge, I have been deceived by many witnesses. It's my job to doubt, to take no one at their word. But in your case, I must admit that you radiate a glow of complete sincerity. I can't believe he actually said that. Why is he... Oh, um, now then, witness, could you please state your full name? I, um... Don't worry, sweetie, there's no need to be nervous. If anyone says anything rude, you can be sure I'll cut them right down to size. And I will bash them with my gavel! I love how they look straight at me when they say that. So really, maybe this is how they... Maybe how Phoenix is treated is just the universal treatment of defense lawyers. Um, thank you for calming my nerves. You're all so nice. I almost feel right at home. Not at all. It was nothing. If we may move on now, what is your full name and occupation? My name is Dahlia Hawthorne. I'm a junior in literature at Ivy University. I just want to say, it's an honor for me to be here in your noble presence. The honor is all mine. No, the honor is all mine. Well, we know whose milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. Okay, that's like the second music reference. Harlem Shake, that... Like what was the was the script for the third game so utterly terrible they had to uphold like just throw it all out with new stuff that's so modern? Um, sir, is there something I can help you with? You just go on and say whatever is on your mind. I'm sure that there must be some kind of mistake. Feeny wouldn't kill anyone. I just know it. You have to be the killer. You have to be the murderer. What is going on here? This is a weird case. Yes, yes. I can see why you'd say that. She's gonna be a tough witness, all right. It only took her 12 seconds to wrap them all around her little finger. Now then, please proceed with your testimony. Let's hear about what you witnessed on the day of the incident, if you please.
I had been planning to go back to Feeny's place after ch class was over. Feeny and Ducky, they were talking behind the building. Then suddenly Ducky got all wobbly and just collapsed. That's when Feeny noticed that I was there. I went to go and find some other students and they called the authorities. Well, we obviously know the answer to that, like, thing, the... I don't know what to say. According to you, Miss Hawthorne, the defendant didn't do anything wrong. But we can easily just say, but everybody admitted. Like, I don't even know if we have it in, like... Yeah, it doesn't seem like we have any evidence, so it'll probably just be something that happens when we press. But... By both the account of Payne, the prosecution, as well as Phoenix himself, there should be a palm print evidence on the chest of his leather jacket, of Swallow's leather jacket. So that's already a lie. Young lady, as old as I am, even I recall how hot the flames of young passion can burn. Nevertheless, it is my job to discover the truth. Please tell us the truth. But, but, I, I would never. That's more than enough, witness. I won't allow this to continue. What do you mean by that? Please, just let me proceed with my cross-examination, Your Honor. I, for one, don't plan to win my case on a bunch of paper-thin lies. Teehee, <laughs> you haven't changed a bit. My Mia Fey. What's this? So you two are acquainted? Yes, we've met before, once. You'd think that would be like stand like you'd think that that would cause like the lawyer to recuse themselves. But then again, <laughs> oh yes, me bringing in like oh yes, if this was actual law and the lawyer knew on some grounds the. A person involved in the case shouldn't they recuse themselves. Meanwhile, the first case in the entire series is <laughs> Phoenix being a lawyer for his childhood friend. <laughs> Pro bono. In any case, Miss Fay, the floor is all yours. It's good to see you again, Madam Fay. Madam? I'm no one's grandma yet, girly. And we'll quickly save, and then just press everything! Now, unless I'm mistaken, Feeny, I mean Mr. Phoenix Wright, is in the art department. If that's the case, then what were you doing by the pharmacology building? Well, I'm in the literature department. I'm studying Japanese Sinryu poetry. Oh, how wonderful! It's that humorous yet satirical style of haiku, yes? Nothing left to do when a man reaches this age. Sleep is his best friend. That's supposed to be poetry? Sounds more like a midlife crisis. For me to get to the art department, I have to walk through the back area. Oh, yes, I see. That makes sense. When I want to encounter the courthouse, into the courthouse, I always walk through the front doors. How else would you enter? Teleportation? Feeny and Dougie, they were talking behind the building. So who is this Dougie person? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Doug Swallow. We were dating until about eight months ago. So what were Dougie, <coughs> uh, Mr. Swallow, and Mr. Wright talking about anyway? How can you be so mean? I would never, I would never eavesdrop. I wasn't raised to be so rude and unrefined. That's right, Miss Faye. Don't drag the witness down to your level. Why am I being demonized here? Please, go on. What did you see next? Then suddenly Dougie got all wobbly and just collapsed. Are you saying that the victim just collapsed on his own? Yes. In other words, the defendant never touched the victim, is that right? I was watching the whole time. Feeney never did a thing to Dougie. If I press her for no good reason, I just... But we know that... Payne said that there was a palm print on the leather jacket. Phoenix testified it. We're pressing. So what should I do with her testimony just now? Presser. Show contradiction. Ah. But do we have anything? That's the problem. And I, I love that we just kind of forgot about Cold Killer X. That that's just not at all been brought up yet. But I guess it might come in more. Hmm. 
Uh, we already saved, so let's show contradiction. Feeble lies are not very becoming, Miss Hawthorne, so let's drop them, shall we? What? I... I would never... Miss Faye, I will not allow you to badger this witness. I, I believe the defense is engaged in a fishing expedition. That is, uh, she has no supporting... <laughs> Please don't glare at me like that! I'm just doing my job! Now then, Miss Hawthorne. The defendant's palm print was found on Mr. Swallow's leather jacket. It has already been shown that Mr. Wright did, in fact, push the victim. What? There's no need to try and cover for the defendant. It would be much better if you came out and told us the whole truth. Hmm. There's nothing to worry about, young lady. Just tell us everything that you saw. Uh, yes, Your Honor. I, I will, if you don't mind. I I'd like to revise my testimony. Looks like we're finally getting somewhere. Um, actually, I didn't see the moment he pushed Dougie. You didn't see it? Well, I saw the moment when Dougie fell to the ground. And at that time, there was only the two of them at the scene. The defendant, Phoenix Wright, and the victim, Doug Swallow. Yes, that's right. I didn't look like they were fighting, and I didn't hear anything unusual either. So then, what did it look like they were doing to you? I thought they were having a nice, friendly afternoon conversation. Oh, give me a break. That's why I really wasn't watching them all that closely. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary at all? No, nothing at all, Miss... Hmm. You also have a parasol like he did. Oh, I like the sound of that, Mr. Judge. Now then, please proceed with your testimony. I went to go and find some other students, and they called the authorities. When you say students, do you mean students from the pharmacology department? Yes, they're very fond of their drugs. Please try to stay on topic. So to find some pharmacology students, you went to the labs, correct? That's what I was planning to do, but in the end I wound up not going. A group of about ten research students came running out of the building entrance. Somehow they all seemed to know what was going on. The students knew what was going on? Press for more details! But how could the students have known what was going on? Well, I don't know for sure that they knew what that happened. It's just, they all seem kind of excited about something. Hmm, it doesn't look like I'm going to get any more info about the students. So did the students call the police? Yes, I, I was just so, so panicked. Hmm, yes, well anyone would have been, my dear. That girl, she's telling a super obvious line, she knows it. She's just pretending to protect Mr. Wright. Yes, that's got to be it. Way to go, Mia. Okay, that means I'm going to have to dig deep to find the contradiction on this one. I don't think there's any contradiction there. Didn't see the moment. Hmm. Hmm. What do I do? I don't know. Let's see. What is con what is a lie here? Maybe let's press again just to be sure. We'll save and press. Because that one was just like, oh, but you're a diddly D. Why are we doing it pharmacology? Let's do it again. Just triple check everything. Okay, so there's nothing there. Didn't see it. One and two of them. That's right. Didn't look like they were fighting. Hmm. I feel like maybe that's the one I need to, pr like... Uh, but do I present, like... Maybe the cold killer? Maybe the umbrella? Maybe the testimony? You say you didn't hear anything unusual, is that correct? Oh yeah, the snap! I'm a dumb. Yeah, because I was more going for, but Phoenix literally said that he was kind of fighting him. They were kind of yelling, and in a furious frenzy, he pushed him and walked away. That's why I was very relaxed looking at the scenery around me. <laughs> Flip that hair. That's nice, but I find that just a little odd. 
I have here the testimony of your boyfriend, Mr. Phoenix Wright, and he clearly testified to the effect that when he pushed the victim, he heard a sharp, loud noise. He said that? If you were really that close to the two of them, why didn't you hear this noise as well? I... B well, maybe the noise just wasn't all that memorable. But according to Mr. Wright's testimony, it was a sharp noise like a snap. There's no way a noise like that could fail to make an impression. Oh! Um, may I have a moment to answer? By all means. I know the reason why I didn't hear the noise. You see, the truth is, I had my headphones on and I was listening to music at the time. Uh, headphones? You mean that both of your ears were covered? The rain was just beginning to let up, but it seemed as though Thor wasn't really ready for his fun to come to an end yet. So the sky continued to flash and rumble. Thunder and lightning, huh? Yes, I'm afraid of the sound of thunder, so I put on my headphones on the blo to block it out. <laughs> well, Your Honor, as you can see, there weren't any contradictions in her testimony after all. Hmm. Wait a second, Mia. That testimony just now. She said something that could totally change this whole case. Could it be that there was lightning? That could change this whole case. She didn't hear anything, which is a lie, because Phoenix... Because that doesn't matter. She didn't hear anything because she was listening to music. And her listening to music doesn't change anything about the case. I'm going to say it's because there was lightning. Your Honor, there is a problem with this witness's testimony. What do you mean? Didn't you notice? She said there was lightning, correct? Yes, what about it? Well, lightning is actually a large discharge of electricity in the atmosphere, am I right? Now's not the time for a science lesson, Miss Faye. Yes, Your Honor. Anyway, since the cause of death was electrocution, isn't it possible that the victim died from being hit by a bolt of lightning? <laughs> but I w I'm wondering what Dahlia's game is. Hmm, I must admit that that thought had not occurred to me. Just what kind of thoughts do occur to this guy anyway? This entire case is built on the premise that Mr. Doug Swallow was murdered. But that very premise itself is mistaken. The defense believes that Mr. Swallow was, in fact, the victim of a stray bolt. It appears the defense may be onto something. Could it be that the death was actually an accident? All right, you did it, Mia. I'll be taking that not guilty now if you please. <laughs> I'm hurt that you have such a low opinion of me, Miss Faye. I'm not a fool, you know. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, no, I'm turning into the phoenix. Oh. I'm not a fool, you know. The prosecution has done its research, Your Honor. We found that there were no lightning strikes on the day of that location. What? What's more, we have evidence that the electrical cable is definitely linked to this case. Evidence, Mr. Payne? Well, what is this evidence? This affidavit. And who is this affidavit from? The pharmacology students who were conducting experiments in their labs that day. Allow me to read out to the court the testimony of the pharmacology students. All equipment in the labs lost power all of a sudden at around 3 p.m. that day. Was it a blackout? All of the lab's equipment runs on high voltage, Your Honor. So you're saying the equipment lost power because... Precisely. They lost power because of the severed electrical cable. The power outage occurred at approximately 3 p.m. Which fits the time of death listed in the autopsy report. Exactly. In other words, the victim died as a result of touching the severed electrical cable. According to the students, the cables were very old. They were planning on having them replaced in the near future. Mm, I see. Apparently, the cables had become so brittle that even the smallest bump would have caused them to break. All right. Hmm. Old power cable broke due to some sort of impact five minutes before death. Well, then again, well, let's take a quick look. It says at 3 p.m., not around, so they know, or they highly believe that it was a death at 3. The affidavit says at 2.55, they lost power. 
and the cable would have flung free. Meanwhile, they were meeting at 245. Hmm. However, there's one thing that troubles me. If the cable could have been broken by any small bump, then it wouldn't have snapped it if it had been bumped in. Then it wouldn't have snapped if it hadn't been bumped into, correct? Well, I suppose you could say that. Miss Fay, do you have any thoughts regarding the cause of the severed cable? We will quickly... Your Honor? I don't like how this is looking one bit. I have to come up with something to try and regain some momentum. If it pleases the court, the defense would like to state its opinion. Well then, let's hear it. Who or what was it that caused the cable to break? Because it was found near the electrical pole. I present the umbrella. This is it. This is why the cable snapped. Well, your honor. Ah, uh, I believe the only thing that has snapped in the mind is the defense. Ah. Uh. Because it was found near the electrical cable. If it flung there, maybe it could have. Mines makes perfect sense. Hmm. We could always just go say, it was Dahlia. Hmm. It says who or what? Obviously not you. Any small bump. That was lost at lunch, so it wouldn't be there. Hmm. Yeah, well, what do we want to do? Because let's just go through. This is irrelevant. This, I think, is irrelevant. Mm, this also seems to be irrelevant. This is, I'm fairly certain, irrelevant. We already tried that. It's not that. Phoenix's testimony, I don't think it matters. These are irrelevant. Maybe we say Doug Swallow? Well, Your Honor? I believe the only thing that snapped is the defense's mind. Hmm. I'm just trying to think. I'm trying to bring up things that make sense, and none of them do. Maybe we could do this? Your Honor, please think back to Mr. Wright's testimony. Because because that is what I previously thought, but at the same time, uh, well, at the same time, same time, I'm just going in circles now. Apologies for that. I didn't w think that you would want to implicate Phoenix, but at the same time, Mia's kind of in for the truth here. So maybe it makes sense. Your Honor, please think back to Mr. Wright's testimony. The defendant's testimony? He said that after he pushed the victim, he heard a loud, sharp noise. Now, this happened at around 3 p.m., correct? Yes, that sounds right. Wait, are you saying that? The lab equipment lost power at 2.55, which fits right in Mr. Wright's timeline. In other words, it was M Mr. Wright's shove that caused the power outage. Why would you look happy about revealing that? Yes, the prosecution also came to that same conclusion. And it was that very shove that caused Mr. Swallow to be electrocuted. I'm afraid I can't agree with you there, Mr. Payne. What's that supposed to mean? Take a good look at where the victim landed after being shoved. See the umbrella? It's by the electrical pole. That's right, the victim banged into the pole as the result of being pushed. It was the impact that caused the cable to break. Hmm, well that makes sense, and then the victim was electrocuted. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but no, it doesn't make sense at all. If the victim was shoved into the far pole, then we wouldn't have been electrocuted by this severed cable in the foreground here. Ah! In other words, someone other than my client must have electrocuted the victim. Order! Order in the court! 
Ah, the lamentations of my enemy. How I've longed to hear them. I just want to understand that. Hmm. And plus, he wasn't shoved into the pole. He was shoved and landed on his umbrella. Hmm. Well, I got there in the end. It, it's true. The defense is absolutely correct. There doesn't seem to be any way the defendant could have done it. Um, Mr. Judge, sir, may I say something? The Madam Attorney's explanation, she said some things that are a little different than I remember them. <laughs> What the? Please, just once more. May I please testify one last time, please, Mr. Judge? You are a weird character. What is your deal? Of course it's all right. Just go right ahead and give your new testimony. This is it. She's finally starting to show her true colors. A whiny backstabber? The truth is, Feeney pushed him twice. The first time he was pushed into the electrical pole, that's when the cable broke. Then Ducky tried his best to run away from him. But Feeney caught up and crashed him into him from behind. The cable snapping and Ducky being electrocuted, it all occurred in less than a minute. Well, that's wrong, because his death was at 3. If it was less than a minute, then it would have been 256 or 257 that he died, not 3. Hmm, so after being shoved, the victim got up and tried to run away. And that is when the defendant pushed him for the second time. I'm so sorry, Feeney, but I just have to tell the truth. You know, after telling weird lies. I'm just be doing the right thing, am I, Mr. Judge? Of course you are, my dear. As painful as it may seem, you are. Now then, Miss Fay, you may proceed with your cross-examination. I think I know of approximately what I need to present, but let's press on everything. Miss Hawthorne, previously in your testimony, you said the following. Actually, I didn't see the moment he pushed Dougie. I know. I I'm sorry. I wanted to protect Feeney. So that's why you basically lied to the court. I was a bad girl, I know. Uh, Mr. Judge? Uh, yes? Would you please, please forgive little old me? Of course he won't. What you did is called perjury. Oh, come now. It was just a little old white lie. We'll forget it this time, but please be more careful from now on, all right? Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Judge. Not at all. Ho, ho, ho. The judge had better be more careful himself. A dark alley is friendlier than that girl. The first time was... Oh, and then beware, Your Honor. We got an achievement there. Just a random achievement for pressing on a specific thing. Weird. You're saying you actually saw the victim get pushed into the electrical pole. I know he doesn't look it, but Feeney can be a bit of an imp when he wants to be. Oh, really? But I never imagined that he would cause an electrical cable to break. Feeney really is scary when he gets mad. Yes, he sounds like a very dangerous individual indeed. Then Dougie tried his best to run away from him. So let me get this straight. You were happily listening to music on your headphones while you watched the scene unfold. What? Miss Faye, I'll have to ask you to stop badgering the witness. Um, I wasn't happy. I was just so scared that I couldn't even move. All I could do was stand there and cheer them on. Ch cheer them on? What do you mean by that? Well, I wish the best for them both. That they were each give the, the fight their all. Hmm, that's very sweet of you to be so supportive. And what happened after that? But Feeney caught up to him and crashed into him from behind. That doesn't sound quite right. There were handprints found on the chest of the victim's leather jacket. Mr. Payne, were there also prints found on the back of his leather jacket? Uh, well, um, no, there weren't. <laughs> Love your channel, Persona. Thank you very much. This is a fun watch so far. Looking forward to more. Thank you very much. I just hope to be entertaining and have fun with this game. But this is such a weird case so far. It's interesting, but it's weird. Interesting that it's a flashback. Weird how both Phoenix and Mia are different, but I guess it's understandable. Five years, it's just... This is such a cool artistic choice, and I want to see more. Plus, I also, hypothesis, believe that this will be the basis for, like, the rest of the game, maybe? With that, like, murder that happened earlier, the eight months, maybe? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But so far, this is at least the most interesting tutorial case.
Plus, it also feels... Actually, that's that's an interesting thing to note now. All the other, like, tutorial cases in the first game and then the second game, they were very much tutorial cases. In this one, maybe it's because I specifically chose the I don't need help, Mr. Grossberg. That's probably it. So if you selected I could use more help, Mr. Grossberg, maybe it would be more heavy on the, and this is how you do that, and this is how you do that, but elsewise it's just like, hey, remember, you can present evidence, and there are profiles as evidence, and you can press. Be on with it. But yeah. This feels the most like a normal case out of the tutorial cases. Madam Faye, may I suggest that you listen a little more carefully? I said that he crashed into him from behind, right? My Feeny wouldn't leave any prints behind that way, would he? Ah. Uh. The cable snapping and Dougie being electrocuted, it all occurred in less than a minute. I think this is the thing I need to press on and present evidence with. Because I think I know what I need to give. Did you actually witness the moment the victim was electrocuted? I'm sorry, I didn't actually see it. I I turned my eyes away. That's understandable. Yes, indeed. It would have been a horrific sight for anyone to behold. If I don't figure out the contradiction here, it's all over. She didn't have much time to come up with her lie, so this is my best chance. There must be a hole in her testimony somewhere. Think, Mia. Now, the problem is... Which one... Do I present? Do I present the death autopsy that says that he died at three? In fact, wrong one. I'm just trying to think. I'm bad with these kinds of ones. Hmm. I'm trying to see if that clock hand has anything to do with it. Because the minute hand is just a bit past the... One. And the hour hand does seem to be pointing at three. But I'm not sure if that means anything. But more importantly, the student's testimony says power went out at 2.55. If it is true that the chase lasted for less than a minute, then the death shouldn't be three. Testimony! That's enough, witness. I'm afraid I don't understand. You will in a minute. Could you please take a look at this picture? Ah, ah, they did the thing again where you're able to present multiple things, I guess. Oh, that medicine. That's the one Feeny likes to take for his cold. It's not the medicine I want you to look at. It's the wristwatch. Ah, a clearer view. Of which, yeah, it seems to be... I'm very bad at reading these ones. It stopped at the precise time the victim was electrocuted. In other words, 3.05. Huh. So I get... But then the autopsy lied. The autopsy said 3. It didn't say around 3. It said precisely 3. Well, maybe not precisely, but it implied it by not precisely stating around approximately 3 o'clock, give or take like 10 minutes. Yes, and your point is, Miss Fay. My point is this. What time was it when the lab suffered that power outage due to the cable snapping? Well, according to the student's testimony, the answer is clear. It was 2.55. Ah! Would you care to explain to the court, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne, what exactly happened during this ten-minute interval? Huh? The defense proposes that it was during this interval that the real murderer killed Mr. Doug Swallow. Order! Order in the court! <laughs> this is nonsense! The real murderer? Even you can't deny that the time between the cable breaking and the electrocution are completely unaccounted for! Th then who was it? Who else are you saying could have done it? There's only one person who could have murdered Mr. Swallow. Only after my client had left the scene was there a window of opportunity for the real killer. Miss Fay, is the defense ready to indict someone as this real killer? It's finally time. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Yes, Your Honor, we are ready. Very well. Excuse me? But remember, if you accuse the wrong person, you will be penalized. Think very carefully before you speak, Miss Faye. 
Now then, Miss Faye, let's have it. Who is the real killer? Dahlia Hawthorne! It would only have been you, Dahlia Hawthorne. What? How, how could you? The, the defense is grasping at straws! Ten minutes passed between the time the cable broke and the time of the electrocution. What exactly were you doing the whole time, Miss Hawthorne? Were you really listening to some music while cheering them both on as they fought? I find it hard to believe that you didn't lift a finger to stop the mean dear the men dearest to you. Order! Order! Miss Faye! What? I mean, why? That is to say... Miss Hawthorne, I believe you did witness the two men fighting on that day. However, after Mr. Wright pushed the victim and subsequently left the scene, it was you who pushed Mr. Swallow to his death by your very own hands. Ah! And then the butterflies come back. How can you say something so mean, Madam Faye? I, I didn't do anything. Miss Faye, this is a very serious charge you are- <laughs> The first hold it from Phoenix? Your Honor! Please, I have something I want to say! <laughs> you! What is it? Please, please strike everything the defense said just now from the record! What the- Are you daft? You're totally wrong, Miss Faye! Dolly, she- She couldn't do something like that! And then it thickens. Mr. Wright, get back in your seat! Bailiff, grab that man! Ah! <laughs> Leave my dolly alone! <laughs> Poor Phoenix. Ah, uh, that boy. He's gotten himself in way over his head. Oh, Mr. Grossberg, you're back. It seems I've arrived just in the nick of time. I found the police report on that incident you, um, in the, your newspaper clipping. Police report added. Thank you so much. This is exactly what I was hoping for. Let's read. Location, District Courthouse, Cafeteria. At a uh, date time, August 27th, 4 p.m. Diego Armando, lawyer, suspect Dahlia Hawthorne. Armando ingested poison while interviewing the suspect regarding another case. Traces of poison were found in the victim's coffee cup. No poison was found in the vicinity or on the suspect's person. It is unclear how the poison entered the victim's cup. I know! It was that nice little present that she specifically keeps asking for back. You'd better take a good look at it. It, uh, details how you came to lose your boyfriend. Jesus, okay. Now I understand why that uh, case was so traumatizing. <laughs> While you learned the inherent trauma that your mentor never told you about, I guess, <laughs> remember to stay hydrated. I wonder if I should draw a hydration, like, sprite for my little talky guy. <laughs> Now then, the defense has made a very serious accusation. Mr. Payne, what do you have to say about this? Uh, well, really, Your Honor, I, I, that is, I... And suddenly she's so calm again. May I interrupt you for just a moment, Mr. Prosecutor? Uh, don't you worry, my dear. I have the situation well in hand. Uh, that is, I, um, g g go right ahead. Madam Fay, are you seriously accusing me of killing my sweet Dougie? Yes, I am. Not only am I saying you murdered Doug Swallow, but you also tried to pin the whole thing on your current lover, Phoenix Wright. I told you that you should let me handle this. <laughs> uh, sorry, but please go ahead. How can you say that? I'm absolutely devoted to my dear Feeny. The notion that I would try to frame him is ludicrous. This is all just too much for poor little old me to bear. I believe the girl is trying to ask what on earth her motive would be. And I know what it is. The answer to that lies somewhere in this police report. I'm, it must. Eight months ago, an incident occurred in the basement cafeteria of this building. And then... That same day, the two of them accidentally meet. Your Honor... The defense requests further testimony from Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. F further testimony? What about? About the events of the day when she first met the defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright. 
What could that possibly have to do with this case? The witness claims that she has no reason to frame the defendant, am I correct? Well, I have evidence that suggests that she, in fact, had a very good reason. Very well, then. The court grants the defense's request. Young lady, would you mind staying on for just a bit longer? Of course not, Mr. Judge. Get ready for the battle of your life, Dahlia Hawthorne. Well, let's get it on. How I met your Feeny. I first met my darling Feeny eight months ago, and all this music... Every single time I really like the music of these games so far. I think personally my rankings would be the original Ace Attorney so far as the best music, but this one's coming close as a second. It's like we were destined to meet in this very courthouse's basement reading room. The moment our eyes met, my heart skipped a beat. Because her heart said, ah, there's a good sucker. We've been going out ever since that fateful day. We're so lovey-wovey, we literally... <laughs> Phoenix from beyond the grave. We're so lovey-wovey, we literally make people sick. I'm just... It's just jealousy, I think. <laughs> That's funny, Phoenix. Miss a right, do that again and you'll be held in contempt of court. And now we enter the final act of our little drama. As we used to say in the days of my youth, go get her. This is such a weird thing. Like, again, this feels like something that technically should have been brought up earlier. Like, oh yes, I met Mia because she saved me from a, a court catastrophe. Let's press everything! So until that time, you had been dating Doug Swallow. Yes, I'm a real fool, I know. Letting my emotions change so quickly, I'm ashamed of myself. No, no, not at all. Look at me. I'm infamous for changing my mind. My critics have even taken to calling me Judge Fickle. <laughs> Maybe you should look for a different line of work. Despite what our, but despite that, however, he always, always hands down the correct verdict. Unless we fail and g fail to convince him, I guess. That's why some people who call him the great Judgeen... Judgeeny... <laughs> It's like we were destined to meet in this very courthouse. It's basically, I love this remix. The music's so good. The courthouse reading room. That's a strange place to meet the love of your life. That's not true, Madam Fay. After all, Feeney was, Feeney was not only an art student, but he also was planning to become a lawyer. And what about you? I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about you, Miss Hawthorne. What was a literature student like you doing in a courthouse reading room? This line of questioning is a waste of time. It has nothing to do with our murder case. Miss Fay, I'm warning you. If this has nothing to do with Mr. Swallow's case... I have to remember the judge. Uh, let's keep pressing, I say. Your Honor, if you'll allow me some latitude, I think I can establish relevance. Please ask her to continue with her testimony. Very well, young lady. I've got a simple question for you. What were you doing downstairs in the courthouse reading room? If it pleases your honor, the answer is simply this. I'd come to this courthouse to do some research for a paper I was writing. You were writing a paper on what? On the relationship between modern Sinrio poetry and the criminal underworld. Ho ho ho! That sounds like a fascinating research idea. Am I getting old? Now I've even forgotten what I've forgotten. <clears throat> Again with the midlife crisis stuff. Mia, why did that girl really come to this courthouse? Isn't that what you wanted to know? And speaking of forgetting things, you haven't forgotten the police report, have you? I went through a lot of trouble to get it, my dear, so be sure to read it carefully. I believe, yeah. Hmm. But if we present this, we can be like... Maybe. Let's go! Miss Hawthorne, you weren't here because your your research paper, were you? Didn't you actually come here for a much more important reason? B -b what is the meaning of the cocky smile on your face, Miss Fay? Eight months ago, right here in this very courthouse, there was another tragedy. Another tragedy? Do you mean the incident in which an attorney was poisoned? The name of the suspect in that incident is listed here in this report. And that name is Dahlia Hawthorne. What? 
to Dahlia Hawthorne? Yes, this sweetie pie of everyone's eye, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. She was the prime suspect in a criminal case just eight months ago. Order! 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 This is unbelievable! It's true, then. The loveliest rose can hide... Miss Faye, that's not fair! You can't slander my witness with an unrelated case. Um... I, Winston Payne, will not allow it. Mr. Prosecutor, I believe I was speaking. Oh, uh, p pardon me. Go right ahead. It's true that about eight years... Eight, mo eight years? That's a jump. Eight months ago, the police expressed some interest in me. Hmm, expressed some interest, huh? Mr. Judge, sir, I know I'm under oath, so I'll tell you the absolute truth. I did not commit the crime that occurred during that incident eight months ago. I see. Okay, I've tied the two crimes together. Now I've just got to stay on the offensive. Well done, Mia. Oh, you really lit a fire in my heart and my buttocks. That sounds so weird. I, I can hardly tell which is more inflamed, my spirit or my hemorrhoids. Why are you just so insistent on bringing that up? I don't remember you ever bringing this up in past games. The poisoning. I met the lawyer who was poisoned to discuss something in the cafeteria that day. I left my seat for just a moment and that's when it happened. From what I heard, it was a liquid poison that is lethal at just two teaspoons. Not only that, I heard it was a very special kind of poison. So you see, I'm innocent. I wouldn't even know where to get a poison like that. Hmm. So that's what happened here eight months ago. However, as you've heard from the witness's testimony, she had nothing to do with it. I think the defense is just about out of tricks. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Payne, but I'm afraid the defense has many more tricks up its sleeve today, and I'll be sure to show them to you before the end of this cross-examination. Ah! What the? Why does the defense suddenly feel stronger? Ha <laughs> Mia, you're glowing with a true lawyer's aura, my dear. That proud posture and self-confidence, absolutely smashing. This is such an interesting case. We'll quickly save, because paranoia, paranoia. What were you talking about with the defense attorney? Well, I... I'm sorry, but that's confidential. According to the report, you are being interviewed regarding another case. The lawyer that was killed, he said he wanted to talk about an incident I was caught up in when I was younger. Why didn't you tell us all that? Why don't you tell us all what that incident was? That has absolutely nothing at all to do with this case. Objection sustained. The defense's question is stricken from the record. You get involved in a lot of incidents, don't you, Miss Hawthorne? Well, I guess I was just born under a bad sign. Don't worry, Dolly. I'll protect you. Uh, that man. Now that is true love, young lady. Oh, Feeny, please. Ah, uh, those two are really making me ill, albeit for decidedly different reasons. How long were you gone? I've already answered all these questions for the police, but if you must know, maybe 10 or 20 minutes. And where were you during that stretch of time? Using the toilet? What are you saying, Miss Faye? Toilet? My perfect little dolly does it poop. Phoenix, you're insane. You heard the defendant, Miss Faye. Better luck next time. Oh, Feeny, please. The police have already looked into this whole affair. This line of questioning is nothing but a waste of the court's time. Objection sustained. Miss Hawthorne, please continue with your testimony. Let me quickly take a look at the police report. And yeah, was that 4 p.m.? Yeah, and just a poison. Found in the coffee cup, no poison found in the vicinity or on the suspect. Hmm. Let's just keep pressing. About how much liquid is two teaspoons? Hmm, well, let me see. My bottle of eye drops says it's one half fluid ounce, which is equal to three teaspoons. So it's about two thirds of that amount, huh? The poison was found in the lawyer's mug of coffee. It must have been after I left the table. Someone must have quietly slipped it in there. And what kind of that was it? A special kind of poison, how so? Well, I heard that it's almost impossible to detect. Oh, and where would something like that come from? I'm sorry, all I know is what I overheard the policeman saying. They said something about using advanced chemical processes to purify it. Chemical processes? Well, well, that's quite... impressive. Most impressive. 
The better question is, how did the criminal get something like that? The pharmacology! Ah, but I think you do know. And that's the reason they didn't arrest you. Because no one could show that you how you could have gotten the poison. I think that's a good enough reason, Madame Fay. She's right, and I think we've all heard enough of Miss Fay's questions. Hmm. So in essence, the main reason Miss Hawthorne was never arrested for this crime was because no one could show how she uh, could show you how she could have obtained the poison. And all we have to do is find a way to establish how she could have gotten some, right? Great. Now I just did a l now I just did a lit. Students get a hold of poison of all things. How did a lit student? Yeah. I'm going to save because I think I do know. You wouldn't know how to get that kind of poison. I don't believe you. What? In fact, you had easy access to that kind of poison, didn't you? At your boyfriend's lab. B boyfriend You mean the victim, Doug Swallow? That's right. Up until eight months ago, Miss Hawthorne was dating Mr. Swallow. And if you recall, Mr. Swallow was a pharmacology student at Ivy University. The, the pharmacology His laboratory contained highly advanced chemistry equipment. In fact, without such equipment, the culprit could never have obtained such a rare and special poison. Uh, well, Miss Hawthorne, it seems you had access to such a poison after all. And then it was a matter of slipping it into the victim's coffee when he wasn't looking. The only person who could have done that was with the one sitting at this very table. You! No! Where does that wind come from? Order! 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 C could it be? Th that's nothing but a piece of accus- May I say something, Madam Fay? What is it, Miss Hawthorne? The amount of poison in the coffee was two teaspoons, correct? In order to carry that much liquid, you would need some kind of container. Well, yes, that's true. I was searched immediately after the incident took place. Quite true. In fact, the entire courthouse was turned upside down. But they didn't find a suspicious container anywhere, did they? But I know where it is. They even mentioned that in the report. But, well, you could have easily gotten rid of something of that small. Excuse me, madam, but this is a court of law. If you're saying I threw the poison container away, I think you need to show some kind of proof. The proof? She got me good with that one. Pro provide some evidence or I'll have to disallow this line of questioning, Miss May. Unless we can come up with some evidence, we're going to lose this lead. The police conducted a full body search of Dahlia in the entire courthouse, and yet the container holding the poison disappeared right after the crime occurred. If you're going to accuse the young lady of committing the murder, then where is the container the poison was carried in? What happened to it? It was given as a present! You were forced to get rid of the container in a hurry, weren't you? And that's why you passed it on to someone that had nothing to do with the case. Someone that you knew wouldn't be searched. Who is this person? Mr. Phoenix Wright, of course. So the defendant was this witness's accomplice? Of course not. She gave the poison to him, to, uh, disguised as a present. What? But, but that's... Hmm. That's a charming little necklace. Is this a little bottle? It's really quite cute. So what about it? What does it mean, Miss Fay? The day the witness met and fell for Mr. Fink's right was eight months ago. August 27th. The very same day as the poisoning incident. Under the pretense of love, the witness gave my client a present. All for the purpose of hiding the one piece of evidence that would give her away. What? Are you saying there's a deadly poison in here? No, there's no longer any poison in that bottle. However, I'm certain if the crime lab were to analyze it, they would find a trace amount. No! <laughs> I wonder if that's it or if we'll have to go on. Order! Order in the court! <laughs> on behalf of Dolly, I object! Mr. Wright, control yourself! I won't let you bully her like this! Mr. Wright, I thought I told you to stay in your seat. Mr. Wright, why? Why are you going through so much trouble to protect her? Why? B because... Because I'm madly in love with her! <laughs> hmm, hmm. Madly in love. I haven't heard anyone say that in a long time. Mr. Wright, 
Have you ever thought about this? Why exactly would a woman like Dolly Hawthorne want to date you anyway? Well, I guess she must be madly in love with me too! Mr. Wright, please open your eyes. At this point in the trial, I think it should be obvious to everyone. The real reason that Dolly Hawthorne is da dating you... Hmm. Safety, safety. Not that. To keep you quiet. Would it be that? No, because he shows the necklace to everyone. And I don't think that he knows it's a poison. So I'm going to say because of that necklace. Dahlia Hawthorne was not and is not madly in love with you. The only thing she's after is the bottle necklace you love to wear around your neck. M my necklace? Back there in the waiting room, you said it yourself. She asked for it back. Yeah, but she's so shy. Every time I see her, she always says the same thing to me. Please give it back now. What a strange girl asking for a present back like that. For Dahlia Hawthorne, that necklace is irrefutable evidence of her crime. That's why she absolutely had to get it back. You're lying. But you never gave it back to her. And to make things worse for her, you ins and to make things worse for her, you insisted on showing it to everyone you met. That's why she I don't I don't believe you. No! That that's a lie! Ugh! Poor Phoenix. This is like the most emotional. But Mia, are you alright? The defendant, he, he's getting away! Bailiff, hurry after him! What the hell? <laughs> Did he run away again? Mia, Mia, are you alright? Yes, I, I think so. That boy, he went completely insane. W where's Mr. Wright? It looks like the bailiff caught him, so he should be back soon enough. Thank goodness. Oh no! What is it? The bottle necklace, Miss Hawthorne's present! It's gone! What? That's terrible! Mr. Wright must have grabbed it when he slammed into me. Foolish boy. That's the only thing that could have saved him. What in the blazes are we supposed to do now? Don't tell me I have to go more. Mr. Wright, this sort of behavior is unprecedented in the history of this court. I'm sorry. I'm afraid that your apology is not enough. Mr. Wright, what did you do with the bottle necklace? Forgive me, I... I... I'm sorry. It's okay, just give back the necklace. He smashed it, didn't he? I... <laughs> what? You... What? <laughs> what? 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 Okay, didn't see that coming. I ate it. You what? You... you... you ate it? It was too big to swallow, so I had to chew it into little bits. So you... well, at least the poison is only good at two teaspoons, so he shouldn't die. So I had to chew it into little bits first, but yeah. Uh... <laughs> what the... what? What is he doing now? Your Honor, you've got to stop the trial! Mr. Wright, Mr. Wright, are you feeling okay? Does your stomach hurt? That bottle you swallowed may have some... may have had some poison left in it! <laughs> it seems the defendant has proven the prosecution's case for us. Clearly the bottle did not contain a deadly poison. How can you be so sure? <laughs> I think that's obvious. As you can see, the defendant is very much alive. As for the poison, more like a fledgling defense attorney's overactive imagination. Hmm, so it would seem. But it, they... No, there must be some mistake. The bottle must not have had any poison left in it. Either that or the poison must have lost its potency. There, there. It's all right, rookie. Trusting your client is the most noble thing a defense attorney can do. And it's heartwarming to see that you place this much faith in Mr. Wright. But that's how it is for us on the prosecution side, too. For example, I would trust the witness, Miss Hawthorne, with my very life. Which is why I can state that your assessment of hers is completely wrong. But don't we have a thing that, like, uh... Yeah, that says... Hmm. I wish that it actually said specifically. Hmm. Because she said in her testimony that it had to have been two teaspoons worth. 
That's enough. Unfortunately, Miss Faye, I cannot accept your explanation of the events. But why? This may be impossible for a beginner like you to understand, but in a court of law, evidence is everything. Uh -huh. Even after I proved so much, is she going to get away with everything? Well, now that the suspicion surrounding Miss Hawthorne has been cleared up, I would like to proceed with the trial. What now? M Mr. Wright! I'm sorry, Miss Faye. It totally slipped my mind. I'm really, really sorry. I know you believe in me, and I feel like I really let you down. Mr. Wright, what are you trying to say? Um, there's something I forgot to tell you. What is it? That day, the day I met Doug Swallow. That girl, you shouldn't see her anymore. Hey, it's none of your business! I'm telling you for your, o for your own sake. If you continue to see her, it's going to be bad news. Y you're lying! Just listen to me. There's something you need to know about that girl. Last night, someone stole some poison from our lab. P poison? The same thing happened eight months ago. A drug sample was stolen. She came to the lab that time, too. It could only have been her. That girl is a thief. Stop it! D don't talk about her like that! And presents motive. Is it true? Did he really say that? Th that's ridiculous! There's one more thing. After I pushed him that day, I got worried and came back to have a look. And she was there. Dolly was right there. She was crouched down next to him. What? She told me not to ever tell anyone about it, but... I'm sorry, Dolly. Y your Honor, this is... The defendant is... Miss Faye, you tell them! D Dolly didn't do it! Sh she's innocent! So Dolly stole eight months ago... Stole, <laughs> stole eight months! That's a powerful tool. Stole poison eight months ago too, huh? you put that together with Mr. Wright's testimony, then there's only one possible conclusion. The defense believes that Miss Dahlia Hawthorne stole some poison on the night before she killed Doug Swallow. The night before? Naturally, her motive for stealing was to kill someone. Miss Fay. If you're so certain of your theory, then let me ask you this. He's probably gonna ask me who that she was going to try and kill. I'm gonna say, maybe Mr. Phoenix Wright, maybe. Yeah, this is your last chance. Think carefully now. There's something that she desperately wanted to get back there for. Exactly who was Miss Dahlia Hawthorne planning to kill? There was one person that was standing squarely Miss Dahlia Hawthorne's way. And that person was... Mr. Phoenix Wright. B -b 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 me Th That's preposterous! After all, it was Doug Swallow that was murdered! Well, it's true that this is how things played out. Oh, my bad. Meh. But let's remember that Mr. Swallow died of electrocution, not poison. The person that Miss Hawthorne was planning to poison was, in fact, you, Phoenix Wright. There's no one else that it could be. But how could that be? I thought Mr. Wright and Miss Hawthorne were in love! Poor Mr. Wright. This must, be, this must be killing him. Hang in there. I'll bring her to justice, I swear it. As I said before, the only thing Miss Hawthorne truly cared about was the one piece of evidence linking her to the incident eight months ago. That's right, the bottle necklace, that's all she cared about. But even so, why? Why would she go so far as to murder him? Eight months ago, just after the fall all of that attorney in the basement cafeteria, Dahlia Hawthorne could think of only one thing, how to get rid of the bottle necklace as quickly as possible. No, it, it can't be. It was a pretty good move she made, too. The evidence was missing for a long time, but there was just one big problem. Although she got him to hide the evidence, Mr. Wright refused to return it to her. To him, that tiny bottle was a cherished treasure. He even showed it to everyone he met. You mean, 
Th that's why she tried to kill Mr. Wright? Correct, Your Honor. It was to retrieve that piece of evidence. The, the, the... That can't be true! Feeny, what a joke you are. Honestly, how can any woman ever count on you for anything? I even told you time and time again to keep your trap shut about me and that necklace. You disgust me. Miss Hawthorne? It appears that we're nearing the end of this trial. Fine, I can tell you plan uh, and on making me into a criminal no matter what I say. You are a criminal, Miss Hawthorne. We'll see about that. But first, where's your evidence? It seems your sniveling little crybaby of a client has eaten the bottle as a snack. Uh, well, um... Hey, old man, are you senile or something? Why don't you say something instead of sitting there with that dumb look on your face? But Miss Hawthorne, what happened to you? Huh, are you really that shocked? Or do you prefer me this way, Mr. Judge? Hmm... With absolutely no proof, you treat a voluntary witness like she's a mass murderer. Well, I have nothing more to say. I'll be heading home now, if you don't mind. But, but we're not finished. Fine. Then ask this nasty old hag to finish up already. I can't let her get away this time. Stop, Mia. If you keep on pushing without any evidence, you could pay the ultimate price as a lawyer. The ultimate price? You'll be forced to take off your attorney's badge forever, I'm afraid. No! Well, I mean, you only did one case and this is your second case ever, so that doesn't seem too bad, honestly. You better think it over carefully, Miss Faye. Or should I say, Miss Gray? Well, Miss Faye, can you provide evidence that would establish her guilt? Maybe the cold killer? That's the only thing I can think of. That's why he had it in his possession, maybe. Let's quickly take a look at things. Police report, I think that's run its course. Student's testimony, I think that's run its course. Yeah, the only thing could be the cold killer, because it's the only thing that hasn't been used. If I mess up here, my career as a lawyer is over. But to be honest, at this point I don't have any evidence that's well-founded. Even so, I'd rather lose my attorney's badge than let her get away with murder. Your Honor, the defense would like to present proof. Impossible! You can't possibly... Stupid woman. It is the opinion of the court that there has already been enough discussion. Therefore, I will allow only one piece of evidence to be presented. Just one? If you are unable to establish her guilt, then I'm afraid that a very harsh verdict will immediately be handed down on Mr. Phoenix Wright. I understand, Your Honor. I can just imagine the headlines for tomorrow's newspaper. Up-and-coming lawyer plummets to earth before she gets the chance to soar. She's planning to poison Mr. Wright. If that's the case, then the poison was probably in there. Haha, the game just told me it. Please present your evidence. True to the court's irrefutable proof than Miss Hawthorne. It's because it went missing at lunch. She stole it probably when he took it out to take some for his... Because he... Because... Phoenix Wright takes a cold killer X pill every uh, with every meal. So he probably took out the bottle and had one with his lunch, but then it went missing. Because Dahlia stole it and infused poison into some of the pills or something. Maybe it replaced it with a different kind of poison that's like like a pill. Ba. Here it is, Your Honor. The evidence that will prove her guilt once and for all. Cold Killer X? Phoenix Wright's beloved cold medicine. <laughs> Does your l rookie defense attorney have a bit of a cold? If I did, I still wouldn't take this cold medicine. After all, it's been poisoned. What? Remember what the defendant said in his testimony? But I lost my bottle of it around lunchtime on the day of the accident. I always eat with Dolly, just the two of us. She was the one who took his bottle of Cold Killer X. Then she poisoned it, knowing that Mr. Phoenix Wright was going to take some. Now you're really grasping at straws. After all, it was the victim, Doug Swallow, that was holding the medicine. I would like the court to recall the crime that happened here eight months ago. 
Where did Miss Hawthorne hide the evidence? Huh? What are you talking about? Eight months ago, the poison was hidden in her bottle necklace, which she then gave to someone else for safekeeping. Someone she had accidentally run into in the reading room. My client, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Yes, that's right. She did the same thing this time as well. After shoving the victim, Mr. Phoenix Wright left the scene of the crime. That is when the murderer, Dahlia Hawthorne, appeared. With her, she was carrying the poison bottle of Cold Killer X. This, of course, was so she could carry out her plan to murder Mr. Phoenix Wright. I keep saying that because of Von Karma from the last game. They just say Wright. <laughs> I believe she did testify that she was going to meet with the defendant. Yes, and she heard and saw everything that happened at the scene of the crime, including what the defendant and victim were arguing about and cut and the cut electrical cable. That's when she realized, I can't allow Doug Swallow to live. She used the severed electrical cable to silence him forever. Unfortunately for her, this is when the problem occurred. Mr. Wright, who she thought had left the scene, came back to check the victim. And on top of that, because of the power outage, some students showed up as well. It's hardly any wonder what sh that she was, as she put it, in a state of panic. Recall that she was carrying the bottle of poison cold medicine. She must have thought, what if they searched me like they did eight months ago? Eight months ago? Yes, she disposed of the evidence exactly the same way she did back then. She had put it in... And someone else... She had... Blah, brain. Because it flashed, my brain got weird. She had someone else hold it. In this case, Doug Swallow. And then there was silence in the court. Oh, come on now, everyone. Surely you aren't fooled, are you? This stupid woman, she's nothing but a filthy, stinking liar. Right, Mr. Prosecutor? Huh? Yes, that's exactly right. It's just pure desperation. Hmm, I wonder which one of us is the desperate one. So, Miss Hawthorne, this cold medicine. I wonder if you wouldn't mind taking some. Well, Mr. Wright ate that necklace of yours, right? Now it's your turn to prove your innocence. What do you say? If I'm just a filthy, stinking liar, then there's no need to worry. So come on, show us! I dare you to take some of this medicine right now! Gang, me a fay, me a fay! Oh! <laughs> she killed the butterflies of a glare! Do you think you've won? Well, do you, f my a fay? <laughs> That's just fine for the time being. Victory is yours. For the time being? Well, I have a very long memory, you know. You and I will meet again, I'm certain of it. But you're guilty of two murders. Shouldn't that get you the death penalty by, the, by this world's logic? Well then, Mr. Judge, I'll see you later too, okay? Huh? Uh, why, um, yes. I'm going to go spend a little quality time with the men in blue now. I wish you all the best. I'm gonna guess that she's gonna appear later in this game. <sighs> it's finally all over. What are you doing now? I refuse to accept this. The defense hasn't shown a scrap of evidence to support their outrageous claim. Oh, but even so, your witness seems to have accepted it. I don't care. I'm Winston Payne. And I don't believe one word that this rookie has said! Well then, Mr. Payne, let me ask you this. Yes? Would you care to try this cold medicine? What?! Just a little earlier, I could have sworn you said. There, there, it's all right, rookie. For example, I would trust the witness, Miss Hawthorne, with my very life! So, if she's so trustworthy... But I'm sure there couldn't possibly be any poison in here, right? Uh, well, um, you see, um, yes. And here comes the backpedal. Come on now, rookie killer, show this rookie how it's done. How much trust do you really have for this woman? Are you willing to bet your life? <laughs> oh, what's this gonna happen? <laughs> My hair! 
<laughs> my beautiful hair, no! No, 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 no! And now he's the normal Winston Payne we all know. Um, Mr. Payne, about Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Yes, Your Honor. I'll file papers for her immediate arrest. Hmm, tragic, but not surprising. I knew there was something suspicious about her from the very beginning. Don't lie, just admit you were wrong. By the way, Miss Fay. Yes, Your Honor. Was it just me, or did you and Miss Dahlia Hawthorne seem to know each other? Your Honor, whether we did or not has no bearing on this case. Hmm, very well. Uh, Mr. Payne. This can't be happening. It's a nightmare. It's like losing to my daughter. It appears Mr. Payne has lost his spirit along with his hair. Does the defendant have anything further to say? It, it can't be true. My dear Dolly. <laughs> um, very well then. I believe I am ready to pass judgment and bring this trial to an end. The court finds the defendant, Phoenix Wright, not guilty. This court is adjourned. This was such a weird freaking case. I really think that Phoenix running away and eating the necklace is a bit of padding. But at the same time, that's kind of something Phoenix would have done. He's enough of a goofball goober to have done something like that. Again, it's it's a bit of a, a, a bit of like stretching out the case, but it did lead to a final confrontation with Dahlia. Personally, mm, considering that we could have just said, hey, instead of the would you care to eat this um, totally not poisoned medicine, we could have just said, hey, we can get people to analyze it for poison. But at the same time, they said that the poison wasn't like was like very hard to trace but i think that might have just been hard to trace in a body after it's been consumed so i don't know the specifics there wobble still the end is a little weird i think hmm I think this is personally more interesting than the uh, tutorial case of the second game Personally, I think the tutorial case of the first game is overall the best tutorial because it's simple. It's not over long. It gives you, like, and not to mention the tutorial bits are kind of spread out across multiple cases, I think. Because they only teach you to press later on in the game, if I recall. I forget. I always knew about the pressing, so I don't... It didn't leave an impression on me of when they added that or, like, when they emphasized that. So I don't know. Or maybe they emphasized it in that case as well. I, it's been a long time since I played the first game. A few months. <laughs> but yeah. This is probably the second best tutorial case because it's the most interesting. It's obviously going to lead into more later on the line because the case from eight months ago and maybe even that other case that apparently Dahlia was wrapped up in that she was being interviewed for might come back as well. The fact that we're seeing this from Mia's perspective, seeing Phoenix right here, this all means something. But let's continue. Mia, you're wonderful in there. Thank you for everything, Mr. Grossberg. During the verdict, I thought my hemorrhoids were going to explode like Mount Vesuvius. Why are you disgusting like this? Um, Mr. Grossberg, is it because he's gross? Do you um, maybe think you could stop talking about them? Hmm. That's rather rude. But maybe that explains why he doesn't talk about them in the future. Anyway, this case really made me think. What does it really mean to have a relationship of mutual trust with a client? Perhaps it is we veteran lawyers who have lost sight of this. Oh, Mr. Wright. Congratulations. Thanks. Um, you know, I was thinking. Go on. The dolly that I saw up there on the witness stand. I don't think that was really her! Um, what? Yeah, the dolly I know could never have said those kinds of terrible things. Maybe, maybe she was like, I don't know, a fake or something. Boy, this poor kid still hasn't got a clue. You need to forget about her, Mr. Wright, for your own sake. 
Yeah, you're right. That's probably for the best. Also, you need to relax a bit more. Try to grow up a little. But! Out of all my friends, everyone says I'm the most grown up. Well, considering that your friend is Larry Butts. <laughs> Not a high bar. What kind of company does this guy keep? Right now, I, I'm studying to become a lawyer myself. That's what you keep saying. But I thought you were in the art department. Well, yeah, I am. But there's a friend that I desperately want to help. And if I hurry, then I should be able to save him in time. That can't, that can't pop. No, it can't possibly be Larry. No, that's impossible. Because it said five years ago. Unless this game, unless, unless Trials and Tribulations takes place like four years after the first Ace Attorney game. Or something. <laughs> I don't know. All right, let's get more context. Let me see. Say, Miss Fay, a lawyer is someone who can help people when they're in trouble, right? Mr. Wright, I'm still new at this myself, but I think that's exactly what a lawyer is. Okay, I'm going to do it. I'll study my butt off. I'll become a lawyer for sure. I hope... I hope we see each other again someday. Maybe even here in court. It's been five years since I was acquitted of all charges. I became a lawyer like I planned and managed to save my friend. But Mia has passed on to a better place. For me, this trial brings up a lot of painful memories. But it also brings up some very... <laughs> my my brain just did a flip de doo da in my head for a moment. <laughs> my brain went, no, Hawthorne could not have been Miss Valentine or whatever her name was from the first game. They kind of have the same shtick, but no. Obviously not. <laughs> but who knows, maybe she has some... Because, like, Dahlia said specifically that they'd meet again. Miss Faye and herself, so who knows, bleh. But it also brings up some very precious ones. And memories that I thought would never rise to the surface again. Mia's gone now. But even so, I can hear her in my mind. Phoenix, no matter what I, no, no matter what. <laughs> no matter what, always believe in your client. In a court of law, your greatest weapon is your belief. Five long years. Something has happened that's made me think back to her words of wisdom. But that's a story for another day. Very interesting. I wonder how that's going to play into the rest. Oh, hey, it's this guy! The coffee man! And it looks like we're going to be getting, like... Ah, okay. I see Maya and Pearl down there. I think next to the shattered, uh, broken spirit vase from the second case of the last game. There's some long-nosed guy and some kind of phantom musketeer. And they're ne uh, like, next to the very large moon. So Cyclops Coffee Guy is obviously going to be in this next section. Wouldn't it be hilarious if we played as him? Because obviously the person taking that stance, like Mia over there, we have to play as them. Haha. Uh -huh. But yeah, no idea what this could possibly be leading into. Of course, we're going to save. And I got to say, that was a very interesting case. It was also kind of weird because I think that's the first flashback case we've done. It makes sense from a tutorial perspective much better than the second game. Oh, I'm going to bash Phoenix over the head of a fire extinguisher, and that's why he needs a tutorial again. Kind of weird. Again, it could also be that it was less tutorialized because I selected I don't need help, Mr. Grossberg, so maybe. The mystery was also not too extreme, but they also, like, it started out very simple and slowly unraveled into more complexity as time went on, which was very good. It was very interesting, a lot of fun, and yeah. I would still put the first one as the best first case because it's nice, quick, simple, sets up the characters, and gets on to the rest. Again, I still think that the second case of the first game could have been better, but blah. But as for this one, it's obviously setting things up. 
Mia's boyfriend was murdered. Dahlia said that they would meet again. Dahlia was already involved in a case. That's why she was being interviewed and she poisoned him. So that's very interesting and I cannot wait to see what else comes up. Hmm. But yes, thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed what you saw, I have two YouTube channels, an edited content YouTube channel, Neon Icy Wings. I swear content is coming to it someday soon. Uh, where, yeah, basically edited content, which could be reviews, rambles, thoughts, and maybe occasional lists of my whatevers. And then, of course, the YouTube channel for streams and archivals of those streams, Neon Icy Games. You can watch me there live or go to see the various backlogs of games that I've played, like Pokemon Crystal, Yellow, Blue Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team, and recently, and we're almost done with Pokemon Emerald. As well as, like, the Mass Effect trilogy and lots more. Lots, lots more. <laughs> or you can watch me on Twitch. Because even though Twitch has kind of been walking the line of evils and pushing people away, it's not totally too evil that I'll leave it just yet. Eh, until it starts to burn extremely, I'll leave. But yes, that'll be twitch.tv slash neonicywings if you want to watch me live there. And then elsewhere, I have, like, if you want to see art similar to my little character in the corner, I post art to various places. Uh, depending if Twitter continues to implode like it has with its stupid rate limit, I might stop posting there because that is obnoxious. But yes, Twitter, Tumblr, DeviantArt, Newgrounds, Inkblot, and most recently, Pillowfort. I'll need to post my backlog there and draw more. Hmm. Other such, uh, and all the links to these places can be found in my link tree, linktr.ee slash neonicywings. Or the direct link can be found in the descriptions, bios, and link places of the various websites. And also linked in my link tree is my archive of our own for my writing that I do, because writing is fun. And if you want to read various things I've done there, you can. As well as another link to my Patreon, in case you want to throw a few dollary dues my way to help me survive the evils of the world. Because the world really is evil, and basically mimicking Twitter and Twitch in a way. Imploding. But yes, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you dudes next time. Bye-bye.